The Second Battle of Gaza was fought between 17 and 19 April 1917, following the defeat of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force at the First Battle of Gaza in March, during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of the First World War. Gaza was defended by the strongly entrenched Ottoman army garrison, which had been reinforced after the first battle by substantial forces. They manned the town's defences and a line of strong redoubts which extended eastwards along the road from Gaza to Beersheba. The defenders were attacked by the Eastern Forces' three infantry divisions, supported by two mounted divisions, but the strength of the defenders, their entrenchments, and supporting artillery decimated the attackers. As a result of the Eve victories at the Battle of Romani, the Battle of Magdaba and the Battle of Rafa, fought from August 1916 to January 1917, the Eve had pushed the defeated Ottoman army eastwards. The EF reoccupied the Egyptian territory of the Sinai Peninsula, and crossed over into the Ottoman Empire territory of southern Palestine. However, the result of the First Battle of Gaza had been as close to a British Empire victory as a defeat could get. In the three weeks between the two battles, the Gaza defences were strongly reinforced against a frontal attack. The strong entrenchments and fortifications proved unassailable during the disastrous frontal attacks, and EF casualties approached, and in some cases exceeded 50% for slight gains. Chapter 1 – Background Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Strategic Situation And the 11th of January War Cabinet decision to reduce large-scale operations in Palestine was reversed on 26 February Anglo-French Congress, and the Egyptian Expeditionary Force was now required to capture the stronghold of Gaza as a first step towards Jerusalem. Gaza was one of the most ancient cities in the world, being one of five city-states mentioned in the Bible as ruled by the Philistines, and had been fought over many times during its 4,000-year history. The Egyptians and the Assyrians had attacked Gaza, followed in 731 BC by the Greeks, with Alexander conducting three attacks and the siege of Gaza in 332 BC. The town was completely destroyed in 96 BC, and rebuilt slightly to the south of the original site. This Gaza was captured by Caliph Omar in 635 AD, by Saladin in 1187 AD, and by Napoleon in 1799. At Gaza there was an important depot for cereals with a German steam mill, barley, wheat, olives, vineyards, orange groves, and wood for fuel were grown as well as many goats grazed. Barley was exported to England for brewing into English beer and in 1912 the 40,000 inhabitants of Gaza imported 10,000 pounds of yarn from Manchester. Maize, millet, beans, and watermelon, all harvested in early autumn, were cultivated in most of these localities. All of the desert column-mounted and infantry divisions had fought during the First Battle of Gaza, when the column's 53rd Division had been heavily involved. This encounter battle by the mounted divisions emphasized speed and surprise, at a time when Gaza had been an outpost garrisoned by a strong detachment on the flank of a line stretching inland from the Mediterranean Sea. While the Desert Column's Anzac Mounted Division and the partly formed Imperial Mounted Division had quickly deployed to guard against Ottoman reinforcements, strengthening the Ottoman garrison at Gaza on 26 March. The 53rd Division supported by a brigade from the 54th Division attacked the strong entrenchments to the south of the town. In the afternoon, after being reinforced by the Anzac Mounted Division, the all-arms attack quickly began to succeed. With most objectives captured, night stopped the attack and a withdrawal was ordered before the commanders were fully aware of the victory. The first battle ended in debacle, according to Pugsley when the Anzac Mounted Division knew they were winning, and saw victory snatched away from them by the order to withdraw. This defeat coincided with low public morale in the British Empire reflecting the continuing Allied failures on the Western Front. General Archibald Murray commanding the EF reported the defeat at Gaza to the War Office in overly optimistic terms such that his reputation, as a consequence, depended on a decisive victory at the second attempt. The commander of Eastern Force, Lieutenant General Charles Dobell, also indicated a substantial victory and Murray was ordered to move on and capture Jerusalem. 
the British were in no position to attack Jerusalem as they had yet to break through the Ottoman defences at Gaza. However, the Australian official historian described the First Battle of Gaza quite differently. In itself the engagement was a severe blow to the British army, since it affected the troops on both sides to a degree out of all proportion to the casualties suffered, or to the negative victory gained by the Turks. There was not a single private in the British infantry, or a trooper in the mounted brigades, who did not believe that failure was due to staff bungling and to nothing else. Preparations for the second attack included the extension of the railway to Deir el Bella, the headquarters of Eastern Force, to enable all available troops to be deployed for battle. Water reservoirs for 76,000 gallons were built in the Wadi Guzzi and dumps of ammunition and supply were established nearby. The weather was reasonably cool and the health of the troops was good. Morale had recovered from the disappointment of the first battle, in which victory had so narrowly eluded them. Up until 4 April, Eastern Force had been responsible for the southern sector of the Suez Canal defense troops, 150 miles away. This duty was transferred to the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, lightening Dobell's load. Chapter 1 Section 2 Reorganization of Desert Column Between the first and second battles of Gaza, Desert Column, commanded by Lieutenant General Philip Chetwode, was reorganized into an exclusively mounted force comprising the Anzac Mounted Division commanded by Major General Henry Chevelle and the Imperial Mounted Division commanded by Major General Henry Hodgson, each with four brigades. Desert Column was to cover the infantry's right flank and attack Ottoman forces along the Gaza to Beersheba Road as far as Hera. The 1st and 4th Light Horse Brigades were ordered forward to join their divisions, to make up four brigades, in each. The Anzac Mounted Division consisted of the 1st and 2nd Light Horse, the New Zealand Mounted Rifle, and the 22nd Mounted Brigades. The Imperial Mounted Division consisted of the 3rd and the recently reformed 4th Light Horse with the 5th and 6th Mounted Brigades. The 4th Light Horse Brigade arrived at Khan Yunus on the 11th of April and after dumping baggage was preparing to move forward on the 14th of April, carrying the light mobile scale of 6 emergency pack bags per squadron, 3 days rations, and 12 pounds grain on each horse. Chapter 1 Section 3 Reconnaissance Operations. On the 1st of April, a reconnaissance mission was carried out east of Wadi Guz between Wadi Es Sharia and the C by 1 battalion each from the 52nd, 53rd, and 54th Divisions. The next day 1,000 Ottoman infantry advanced to the right bank of the Wadi Guz. Both sides conducted day and night patrols. The 10th Light Horse Regiment scouts led a reconnaissance by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade east of the Wadi El Guz, when Ottoman artillery was very active during a skirmish with an Ottoman cavalry patrol, some miles beyond the front line. Joseph W. McPherson, an officer in the Egyptian Camel Transport Corps was invited by two Royal Engineer messmates to accompany them on a reconnaissance during the afternoon of Good Friday 6 April 1917. He subsequently wrote, we saw parties of Turks and mapped down new trenches they had made, got sniped at incidentally, and had to travel a good bit of the way on our bellies. Chapter 1 Section 4, Air War Aerial reconnaissance was carried out by both sides. Aerial photographs enabled a new partly contoured map on the 140,000 scale to be printed before the Second Battle of Gaza. However, each side was keen to monitor the other's preparations and the air became disputed territory. Newly arrived German aircraft attacked EF reconnaissance aircraft, during which several duels were fought, none being decisive. On 6 April five German aircraft approaching Rafa were intercepted by two AFC Martinside aircraft, one of which was forced to land and was destroyed on the ground, while the other went for reinforcements. Three Martin sides arrived to attack the German formation. Aerial bombing was also strenuously continued by both sides, and while this aerial fight was taking place, hostile aircraft bombed Bir El Mazar. On 7 April a joint raid by four Australian aircraft, with several from No. 14 Squadron, bombed Gaza and the Ramlay Aerodrome, hitting two hangars. At El Arish Hospital, 
Dr. Dukit described the strong moonlight on the 8th of April 1917, now it is climbing the heavens. 10.30 p.m. It is as clear as day, and the shadow thrown on the sand is very definite. I hear we are expecting an air raid soon. The regiments are digging funk holes everywhere. Rafa was bombed, twice on the 12th of April by three German aircraft, after which 17 aircraft from the combined EF squadrons bombed Ottoman positions along the Beersheba line, dropping 1,000 pounds of bombs each on Hooge and Cage. L. Beer. Retaliatory raids followed in quick succession before midday and continued on during the three subsequent days, accompanied by increased heavy artillery fire from both sides. I should think there are at least 300 smoke wreaths floating above us in the sky, some black, some white, the only clouds in the serene blue, a torp and an English plane are maneuvering and occasionally getting in a shot at one another, war English planes are coming up through a barrage of shell bursts and pieces of our own shells are falling in our own camp, almost a greater danger than Fritz's bombs. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, Defending Forces During the three weeks between the first two battles for Gaza, the town was quickly developed into the strongest point in a series of strongly entrenched positions extending to Hera 12 miles east of Gaza, and southeast, towards Beersheba. They increased the width and depth of their front lines, developing mutually supporting localities on ideal defensive ground. The construction of these defenses changed the nature of the attack to an infantry frontal attack across open ground, with mounted troops in a supporting role. The Ottoman force defended 10 to 12 miles of entrenched defenses supported by well concealed and sighted guns. The positions held by the force commanded by Kress von Kressenstein began on their right flank on the Mediterranean coast, which was strongly entrenched. Next, Gaza and the country to the east of the city was dominated by wire trenches situated on rising ground, while the line towards Beersheba was less strongly fortified. The German and Ottoman forces' well-prepared positions emphasized the advantages of defense by areas as opposed to linear defense, at least by day and in clear weather. The well-sighted redoubts covering wide gaps provided mutual support and facilitated a large reserve force outside the danger zone, which was available to take advantage of counter-attack opportunities. The defenses at Atoine, Sausage Ridge, Hera, and Tiaha supported each other as they overlooked an almost flat plain, making any attack against them almost impossible. After the first battle an additional two regiments of the 53rd Division, four artillery batteries, and some cavalry reinforced the defenses. The force defending the town of Gaza and the western coastal sector consisted of 3rd Infantry Division 31st Infantry Regiment 32nd Infantry Regiment 2 Machine Gun Companies 4 Batteries of Field Artillery Austrian Mountain Howitzer Batteries 1 15cm Howitzer Battery 1 Regiment of the 16th Infantry Division Group Tilla, a total of 7 Infantry Battalions 79th Infantry Regiment 2nd Battalion, 81st Infantry Regiment 125th Infantry Regiment 1 Squadron of Cavalry 1 Company of Camelry 12 Heavy Mountain Howitzers in 2 Austrian Howitzer Batteries 2 Long Guns in the German 10cm Battery from Pasha I 2 Ottoman Field Artillery Batteries dot at Hera 1 Regiment of the 16th Infantry Division at Tel Eshuria 16th Infantry Division and 1 Regiment, either of the 47th Infantry Regiment, or the 48th Infantry Regiment 3rd Cavalry Division's 1,500 Swords at Cage Sion 53rd Division 2 Battalions of the 79th Regiment 4 Batteries Some Cavalry at Beersheba 2 Battalions of the 79th Regiment 
One artillery battery they were supported by the 7th and 54th Infantry Divisions of the 20th Corps and 3,000 reinforcements from the 23rd and 24th Infantry Divisions of the 12th Corps. The British estimated 21,000 Ottoman defenders at Gaza, and Tel Eshuria, 4,500 at Kaj. Sion, with a further 2,000 at Atoyne. Other British estimates include 25,000 German and Ottoman troops in the area, with 8,500 at Gaza, 4,500 east of Gaza, 2,000 in the Atoyne redoubt, and 6,000 at Hera, and Tel El Sharia at halfway between Gaza and Beersheba. The official British historian notes there were 18,000 rifles on the front during this second battle, including the Beersheba detachment. The ration strength of the defending force was 48,845, including 18,185 armed with rifles, 86 armed with machine guns. Although they had a total of 101 artillery pieces, only 68 guns were in action during the battle, 12 of which were larger than field gun caliber. The War Office thought they could be 30,000 Ottoman troops in southern Palestine with the Gaza Beersheba line, defended by about 18,000 men. On the 10th of April, Dobell understood that Gaza was defended by three regiments, with two regiments east of the town, two regiments at Hera, and one each at Tel Esharia and near Huj, with potential for mutual support. Just before the attack, it was understood that an Ottoman force of 21,000 held the ground between Tel Esharia and Gaza, including 8,500 at Gaza, 4,000 at Khl Beer, and 2,000 at Atoyne. On 15 April 1917, the Ottoman forces were estimated at about 1,500 to 2,000 cavalry, 60 to 70 guns, and 20,000 to 25,000 infantry holding the Sharia, Hera to Gaza line with a small reserve near Accra. Chapter 2 Section 2 Attacking Forces Murray ordered Dobell to attack Gaza with three infantry divisions. These were the 52nd Division commanded by Major General W. E. B. Smith, the 53rd Infantry Division commanded by Brigadier General Stanley Mott, and the 54th Division commanded by Major General S. W. Hare. The 52nd Division had not been involved in fighting since the Battle of Romani eight months ago, while the 53rd Division and to a lesser extent, the 54th Division had both been involved in the first battle. These two divisions had been almost up to establishment levels before the battle, but they were now on average about 1,500 below establishment. The approximate 4,000 casualties suffered during the first battle had been suffered, almost entirely by the 53rd Division, although the 161st Brigade had also suffered particularly heavy losses, remaining in divisional reserve during the second battle. It is not known what reinforcements the 53rd Division received during the period between the two battles. The 74th Division, which had been hastily formed from 18 dismounted yeomanry regiments, was now complete except for artillery and one field company. The division arrived and on 7 April took over the outpost line along the Wadi Guzzi from the 54th Division. The infantry would be supported by the Desert Column's two mounted divisions, each consisting of four brigades. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Artillery and Armor Eastern Force had 170 guns, 16 of which were of medium or larger caliber. With the arrival of Railhead at Deir El Bella on 5 April, more medium artillery was transported forward. These included all 12 of the 60-pounder guns, the 201st Siege Battery of two 8-inch and 6-inch howitzers and the 3rd Brigades of the 53rd and the 54th Division's Field Artillery, and represented the only additional artillery received between the first and second battles. By the 18th of April all heavy guns had been registered on their targets by artillery aircraft flying up and down the line, marking every flash. A detachment of eight heavy marker tanks from the tank corps reached the front. Tanks had been in use in France since September 1916 and Palestine was to be the only other theater of the war they were employed. They seemed to offer the best chance of a successful frontal assault. Leiden Bell reported to the war office that they would frighten the defenders out of their lives. 
Senior officers apparently deployed them for this purpose in widely separated pairs. The tanks which arrived in Palestine in January 1917 had been used for instruction, and were not of the latest type, however during a trial attack they proved themselves in the sandy conditions. He sand though fairly heavy, did not interfere with them in the least. They buzzed along most, satisfactorily. They worked well in sand so long as the treads were not greased, which was the normal practice. The tank, War Baby was powered by a 105 horsepower engine. It had a revolver, loopholes, periscopes, dynamos and differentiator, and was armed with four Hotchkiss machine guns and two auxiliary guns. This tank was manned by one officer sitting beside the driver, four gunners on bike seats and two greasers. The tanks were to be deployed along the front and advance across open country where they could give shelter to the infantry following behind them. However, as the tanks became targets the infantry also suffered, and only two tanks succeeded in reaching their objectives. A supply of 4,000 rounds of 4.5-inch gas shells was received by the EF. These were to be the first gas shells used in the Palestine campaign. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 3 Aerial Support A total of 25 aircraft were available in the 5th wing, including 17 B.E.2S and 8 Martin sides which, although being the best fighters available, tended to overheat. At this time, the 5th wing headquarters, the headquarters of No. 14 Squadron along with its a flight, and No. 67 Squadron AFC, were all stationed at Rafa. No. 14 Squadron's B Flight and Advanced Headquarters were located at Deir El Bella, YX Aircraft Park was across the Suez Canal at Abassia, with the Advanced Aircraft Park on the canal at Kantara. During the three days of the Second Battle, EF Artillery Aircraft flew 38 missions and engaged 63 targets. They located 27 batteries, despite difficulties identifying targets through the haze and dust caused by the bombardment, and being attacked by hostile aircraft. Nevertheless, 128 direct hits were recorded by the artillery and three guns destroyed, while German and Ottoman anti-aircraft artillery caused the death of three pilots and the loss of two aircraft. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 4 Medical Support all the camels of the mounted field ambulances remained at Dia El Bella during the fighting except for a small proportion which moved forward, but ambulance men and transport remained at Dia El Bella during the fighting. As the attacks were made across open country without any cover, many casualties had to be collected in full view of the enemy. Evacuations from Desert Column were carried out by 36 Ford ambulance wagons, six from each division, with a convoy of 24 operating between divisional receiving stations at Tel El Genemy, and the 53rd British Casualty Clearing Station at Deir El Bella. Then they were transported back to the No. 2 Australian Stationary Hospital at El Arish on the railway before continuing their journey back to Kantara. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 5 Dobell's Plan Dobell and Murray discussed the advantages of a flank attack on Gaza from the east, instead of a frontal attack. However, the lack of water in the area towards Beersheba put it beyond the resources of the EF in April 1917. Dobell therefore planned a direct frontal attack on the well-prepared Ottoman defences. He would employ all his available force to crush the main positions defending Gaza, while Desert Column advanced on the right flank, in preparation for a pursuit of the assault would be made in two stages. Firstly the 52nd and 54th Divisions would attack and capture Sheikh Abbas and make a general advance of 2 to 3 miles beyond the Wadi Ghazi, to place the infantry in a position to launch the main attack on Gaza. These two divisions, with the 74th Division in reserve, would advance east of the S. Sire Ridge with the 53rd Division, advancing between the Rafa to Gaza Road and the Mediterranean coast. They would subsequently entrench and wire their new forward line, stretching from Tel El Ujul on the Mediterranean shore to Essa Ridge, along the Manusra Ridge to Sheikh Abbas, where an infantry brigade would strengthen the defences. This attack was to be covered by the Desert Column, operating to the east and southeast, to stop reinforcements, moving from Hera and Tel Esh Shuria, from reinforcing Gaza. Secondly, 
as soon as preparations were complete and allowing at least one clear day between the two stages, the 52nd, the 53rd, and the 54th Divisions, supported by the Imperial Camel Brigade, were to launch the main attack on Gaza from the south, southwest, and southeast. The 74th Division would form the reserve, while their right flank was protected by Desert Column. The column was to protect the right of the infantry from an advance by the enemy in and beyond the entrenchments at Atoyne and Hera on the Gaza to Beersheba Road. They also had orders to exploit an infantry breakthrough, and attack Hera on the extreme right, and they carried rations for the next day along with an iron ration. According to Falls, some subordinate commanders suggested a concentrated infantry attack in depth on the coastal side of Gaza offered far more favorable opportunities for an infantry attack. Some infantry divisional commanders considered the artillery insufficient for the width of the proposed attack. They thought a more narrowly focused attack would make better use of the available artillery. Chetwode and Chevelle, the two most experienced generals in the force, watched the extension of the Ottoman defenses at Gaza with some foreboding. They had seen the strength and determination of Ottoman defenders in entrenched positions at the Battle of Magdaba and the Battle of Rafa. After receiving fresh information regarding Ottoman deployments on 10 April, Dobell modified his plan to incorporate a more flexible approach. While the first stage would remain unchanged, during the second stage of the battle he might attack directly by swinging his line slightly northeast, with only one division attacking Gaza to create a gap for Desert Column depending on whether the hostile Atoyne defences were reinforced by units from the Hera detachment. Or he might send most of his force to the coastal side of Gaza to make an attack there. Chapter 3, Rattle Chapter 3 Section 1, Preliminary Move, the 16th of April By the 16th of April Murray had moved his advanced GHQ EF in a railway train, from El Arish to Khan Yunis, and was in telephone communication with Dobell's Eastern Force Battle Headquarters at Deir el Bella, five miles south of the Wadi Ghazi. Meanwhile, Chetwood moved his Desert Column headquarters from near Insirat to Tel el Jemi. Just after 1900 hours, the infantry divisions marched towards the Wadi Ghazi crossings, while the Anzac Mounted Division left Deir el Bella at 1830 with the New Zealand Mounted Brigade leading the night march. At 4.30 on 17 April the Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment led the way across the Wadi Guzzi at the Shalal Ford, followed by the remainder of the Anzac Mounted Division. The Imperial Mounted Division closed its headquarters at Deir el Bella and reopened at Tel el Jemi. At 15.45 the 3rd Light Horse Brigade left Gozel Ter to take up an outpost line at Jemi, while the 4th Light Horse, 5th and 6th Mounted Brigades were in the bivouac area by 2200 hours. The 5th Mounted Brigade moved out at 1.30 on 17 April with orders to capture K.H. Irk. Chapter 3 Section 2, Initial Assault, 17, and the 18th of April. The Second Battle of Gaza began on 17 April 1917 and lasted three days. Operating as Eastern Attack commanded by W. E. B. Smith, the 52nd and 54th Divisions were to capture a line from Sheikh Abbas, through Mansura to Kurd Hill on the S. Sire Ridge as quickly as possible, and entrench their new positions. These two divisions were deployed for the attack, the 54th Division on the right and the 52nd Division on the left, while the 53rd Division advanced across the Wadi Ghazi, west of the Rafagaza Road to Tel El Ujul to establish an outpost line in the sand dunes covering the 52nd Division's left flank, with the 74th Division in reserve. Two tanks attached to the 163rd Brigade, 54th Division, started their advance from Dumbbell Hill at 4.30, but the leading tank was put out of action after being hit by three shells. The attack on Sheikh Abbas succeeded by 7 o'clock when the area was occupied and work began to fortify, and entrench the position. The advance by the 52nd Division was more strongly opposed but after their 157th Brigade captured the Ottoman outpost at El Burjabai, they were able to occupy Mansura Ridge. Here their advance was brought to a halt when they were targeted by Ottoman artillery firing from Ali Munta. Despite this, the captured position was consolidated. 
During the day a fortified line was constructed from Sheikh Eileen to Sheikh Abbas about three miles from Gaza. With the capture of the Mansura ridges, a line from there to the sea, about two miles from the Wadi Gaza was established. At daylight, tanks moved round the Mansura ridge to destroy any remaining Ottoman posts, but the terrain was unsuitable and they were stopped by Ottoman artillery. Eastern attacks suffered 300 casualties, but all the objectives they had captured had been defended only by Ottoman outposts. Desert Column's role during the day was to protect the right flank of the 54th Division and demonstrate against Hera. The 5th Mounted Brigade crossed the Wadi Gaz at 2.30 and moved up the Wadi Es Sharia to occupy Kaj. Erk three miles south-southwest of Hera, at dawn. A patrol of the 1 over 1 Worcestershire Yeomanry cut the telegraph line between Hairpin and Hera Redoubts, taking out 100 yards of line and removing the insulators. Meanwhile, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade drove in an Ottoman outpost during their advance towards Hera. The Anzac Mounted Division watched the country to the southeast during the day while being frequently bombed. Field ambulances in the rear were also bombed. The Imperial Mounted Division remained at Desert Column headquarters at Tel El Jemi. From noon, the New Zealanders held a line near in Siri on the Shalal to Beersheba Road, from where they saw a great deal of movement around Tel Esheria, and the Beersheba to Ramlay Railway Viaduct at Urjig. At dusk the 22nd Mounted Brigade of Yeomanry continued to hold the outpost line, while the remainder of the Anzac Mounted Division retired to Shalal to Waterdot the following day, on 18 April while the infantry consolidated their positions and prepared for battle, and an EF artillery bombardment of hostile positions from the land and sea was reciprocated. During this artillery duel, the guns searched for the positions of the Ottoman artillery, EF artillery, and shipboard guns targeting Gaza, and Hera positions. Also during the day, the infantry was reinforced by the Imperial Mounted Divisions, and the Imperial Camel Brigade. The right flank continued to be guarded by the Anzac Mounted Division, which repeated their movements of the previous day to cover the right flank of the new infantry positions, when they were subjected to frequent bombing which caused heavy casualties. Supplies of ammunition and water were brought forward to them, across the Wadi Guzzi. Chapter 3 Section 3 Exploitation the 19th of April. Following the success of the first phase of Dobell's plans, he decided not to attempt a flanking attack from Atoyne or Hera on Gaza, but to return to his original plan and launch a series of attacks while Desert Column pinned the defenders to their positions on the right. The 53rd Division, Eastern Force, and Desert Column were to attack the 10 to 12 miles of entrenched Ottoman defences, which were strongly supported by well-concealed and sighted guns. The eastern attacks two infantry divisions would make the main attacks stretching from Mansura and Sheikh Abbas, then swing to the left to capture Ali Munta before moving into the town of Gaza. This attack would cover the route taken by the Anzac Mounted Division during the first battle, to Kaj. El Bia and Kaj Sion where a gap would be made for units of Desert Column to ride through. The deployments, shown on the maps do not indicate any available mounted units. While this attack took place on the eastern side of Gaza, on the western side the 53rd Division was to capture the coastal defences in the sand dunes. Five tanks were attached to eastern force and two tanks attached to the 53rd Division, while the 74th Division would remain in reserve. The Anzac Mounted Division would extend the line eastwards from the Imperial Mounted Division, in preparation for an attack on the Atoyne Redoubt, leaving the 22nd Mounted Brigade to defend the Shalal Ford. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 Bombardment The battle began at 5.30 with a two-hour artillery bombardment during which the French Coast Guard ship Requin, protected by a screen of drifters and trawlers and escorted by two French destroyers, fired at Ali Munta. French ships became involved after operations passed out of the British naval zone, which ended at El Arish. One monitor fired on the Warren on the western side of the ridge and another monitor fired on the labyrinth. After 7.30, 
the ships shifted their fire to north and northwest of Gaza and north and northeast of Ali Munta to avoid firing on the infantry. The ships were targeted by a German submarine during the afternoon which fired a torpedo at Requin, just missing the ship. Eastern force heavy artillery fired on the hostile artillery batteries and strong defensive points that held up the infantry attack. For the first 40 minutes, the field howitzers fired gas shells at hostile battery positions and at the woodland area southwest of Ali Munta. Afterwards they continued their bombardment, firing high explosive shells for the remainder of the two hours. The 15th heavy battery shelled gun positions and trenches near Cage El Beer, the 10th heavy battery targeted the ridge east of Gaza to Friar Hill, the 91st heavy battery fired on El Arish Redoubt, Magdaba Trench, and hostile batteries west of Gaza, while the 6-inch howitzers of the 201st Siege Battery targeted Outpost Hill and Middlesex Hill on the S. Sire Ridge. The 8-inch howitzer fired on Green Hill and the southern Gaza defenses. These guns were supplied with 500 rounds per 60 PDR and 6-inch howitzers, 400 rounds per 8-inch howitzer, 600 rounds per 4.5-inch howitzer, and 600 rounds per 18 PDR. Divisional commanders controlled the use of their divisional artilleries, excepting three brigades of 18 PDRS. The 263rd Brigade, 52nd Division was attached to 54th Division until 7.30 when it transferred to the 74th Division with the objective of defending the Sheikh Abbas Ridge. The 267th Brigade, 53rd Division was attached to the 52nd Division until 7.30 when it returned to the 53rd Division. The 272nd Brigade, 54th Division was attached to Eastern Force Artillery until 1830 the 18th of April when it came under orders of 74th Division. The available guns had been deployed at a ratio of one gun every 100 yards, compared with one gun every 36 feet at Arras, on the Western Front, in April 1917. There were not enough guns to cover the 15,000 yards front. The light field guns could not produce a sufficiently dense bombardment, and the thin barrage was not effectively strengthened by the naval guns. It quickly became clear that the gunfire from the warships, heavy artillery, and field howitzers, including the gas shells, had not silenced the defenders' artillery. Ten minutes before the infantry attack, 18 PDRS began their covering fire. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 3 Infantry Attacks On the western side of Gaza in the coastal sector, from their position across the Wadi Guz at Tel El Ujul, the 53rd Division was to attack and capture Samson Ridge, a great sand dune halfway between the Wadi Guzi and Gaza. Then they were to advance and capture the western Ottoman defenses between Gaza and the Mediterranean Sea. Meanwhile, on the eastern side of Gaza, Eastern Attacks 52nd Division on the left was to attack Ali Munta, including the Labyrinth and Green Hill. On their right the 54th Division, with the Imperial Camel Brigade attached to broaden the infantry attack, was to advance north from Sheikh Abbas towards Cage Sion and Cage. El Beer. Coastal Attack, 53rd Division Brigadier General S.F. Mott's 53rd Division began their advance from Tel El Ujul, between the Mediterranean coast and the Rafa to Gaza Road at 7.15 in extended order, moving across the sand hills 15 minutes before the 52nd Division began to advance on their right. The 159th Brigade on the left was to capture Sheikh Island on the seashore, while the 160th Brigade on the right was to capture Sampson Ridge, each supported by one tank. They were to subsequently make contact with the 52nd Division on Ali Munter in order to launch a joint attack from the Zoweid Trench in the west, to the Romani Trench on the Rafa to Gaza Road. The 159th Brigade on the left advanced fairly well until it reached about 800 yards from Sheikh Island, where orders required it to wait for the capture of Samson Ridge, due to the possibility of exposing their right flank. On their right, Machine gun fire from the woodland area delayed the 160th Brigade's attack on Samson Ridge, which was not captured until 1300 hours. This woodland area southwest of Ali Munta in the vicinity of Romani Trench and Outpost Hill, had been targeted with gas shells during the artillery bombardment. Despite heavy casualties, Samson Ridge was captured during a bayonet attack, 
but most of the officers and NCOs were casualties. By the time Samson Ridge was captured, a second lieutenant was in command of the battalion. They also captured 39 prisoners. Subsequently, the 159th Brigade captured Shake Island on the coast without difficulty, while a counterattack on Samson Ridge against the 160th Brigade was unsuccessful. The division suffered 600 casualties, most of them during the fighting for Samson Ridge, but were unable to advance further until the 52nd Division came up to protect their right flank. The official British historian was critical of this division, it appears that the men of the 53rd Division still felt the effects of their losses, disappointments and fatigue in the battle fought three weeks earlier, for their advance, even up to Samson Ridge, had been much slower than that of the other two divisions. Eastern Attack 52nd Division on the left of Eastern Attack and extending the line of the 53rd Division, the leading brigade of the 52nd Division, the 155th Brigade would begin their attack by pushing forward along the S. Sire Ridge with the 156th Brigade echelon behind to their right. Having captured the ridge, the 155th Brigade was to swing up to make a joint attack with the 156th Brigade on Green Hill and Ali Munta while their 157th Brigade remained in Eastern Attack Reserve. The advance by the Eastern Attack, from their consolidated positions at El Burjabai, Mansura Ridge, and Sheikh Abbas, began at 7.30, 15 minutes after the attack by the 53rd Division. The 155th Brigade moved along the spine of the S. Sire Ridge with deep gullies on either flank. The 5th Battalion, of the King's Own Scottish Borderers on the left, was flank guard against the woodlands on the western slope of the ridge, which had been targeted by gas shells during the artillery bombardment, with the 4th Battalion Scots Fusiliers on their right. The 4th Battalion King's own Scottish Borderers was in support. When the leading troops and the tank reached the gullies between Queen's and Lee's Hills on S. Sire Ridge, the tank nosedived into a gully. However, the second tank took its place and by 8.15, Lee's Hill was occupied. Having secured S. Sire Ridge, the 155th Brigade's attack towards Outpost Hill came under artillery and machine gun fire from their front and left flank, from the direction of the Romany Trench and the Labyrinth. Until the 53rd Division captured Samson Ridge at 1300 hours, the 155th Brigade on the left flank of the 52nd Division was exposed to heavy fire from rifles and machine guns. The 5th Battalion King's own Scottish Borderers, following the remaining tank continued the attack, wheeling slightly away to the left to attack and occupy the Ottoman Net fortification, on Outpost Hill at 10 o'clock. Meanwhile, the 4th Battalion Royal Scots Fusiliers, suffered very heavy casualties while attacking Middlesex Hill to the northeast and was stopped within 300 yards of their objective. By this time the shortage of artillery shells was beginning to affect the attack. Had Middlesex Hill, Green Hill, and Ali Munta, all within a relatively small area, been heavily bombarded, the 52nd Division's 3rd Brigade could have dominated Gaza. Instead, hostile fire from the woodland area continued to target the 155th Brigade, and an hour after capturing Outpost Hill the 5th Battalion King's own Scottish borderers were forced to withdraw after being heavily counter-attacked. After hand-to-hand -hand fighting, Outpost Hill was recaptured by the 4th Battalion King's Own Scottish Borderers, reinforced by the 5th Battalion King's Own Scottish Borderers and the 5th Battalion Royal Scots Fusiliers. This lunette fortification continued to be held by the 155th Brigade during the afternoon, despite continuing counterattacks. After all the senior officers became casualties the 70 survivors were withdrawn, minutes before the 7th Battalion Highland Light Infantry, under heavy Ottoman artillery fire, arrived from Eastern Force Reserve to reinforce them. The Highland Light Infantry Battalion was forced to dig in just to the south of Outpost Hill. The attack of the 156th Brigade was held up at 10 o'clock until the right of the 155th Brigade recommenced their advance. However, shortly afterwards the 156th Brigade's 8th Battalion Cameronians was stopped by fire from Middlesex and Outpost Hills. They were caught out in the open for five hours, with their right flank exposed to constant fire mainly from Green Hill, 
as a consequence of the 54th Division on their right flank advancing out of sight. After the 156th Brigade made a slight withdrawal, effective divisional artillery fire halted a strong Ottoman counterattack from Ali Munter at about 15 colon 30. Meanwhile, the 157th Brigade, less the 7th Battalion supporting the 155th Brigade, moved forward from reserve below Mansura Ridge to Lees Hill and Blazed Hill. A planned joint attack time for 1600 hours was delayed, and at 1640 Eastern Force ordered the infantry to discontinue the advance and dig in from east of Hart Hill Division, through Outpost Hill to the right of the 54th Division near K. Chen Hamus. The 157th Brigade relieved the 155th Brigade, which had suffered 1,000 casualties from a strength of 2,500. Regarding the names of the numerous locations in the Gaza area, the official British historian notes, new names appear with each new attack. Eastern Attack, 54th Division on the left of the 54th Division, advancing from Sheikh Abbas, the 162nd Brigade stretched from the intersection of the Wadi Mukaddam with the Gaza to Beersheba Road in the west, to the 163rd Brigade on the right advanced on a 1,500 yards front, its right towards the northeast, to an Ottoman redoubt one mile northwest of KH Sion, with the Imperial Camel Brigade on their right. The 161st Brigade formed a divisional reserve. The attack by the 162nd Brigade on the left was almost immediately fired on by artillery from behind Ali Munter and by machine guns and mountain guns firing from nearby hostile trenches. The 10th Battalion London Regiment attacked on the left with the 4th Battalion Northamptonshire Regiment on the right, and the 11th Battalion London Regiment in support. During the attack the left half of the 10th Battalion London Regiment became separated from their right. This occurred when the left section faced a non-connected line of trenches, through which they were able to fight their way across the Gaza to Beersheba Road at 8.30, forcing an artillery gun to withdraw. A member of the signal section twice successfully climbed telegraph poles and cut the line, before being killed during a third attempt by an artillery shell. The left section of the 10th Battalion London Regiment became completely isolated from the right section when a gap of 800 yards formed between the two sections of the battalion. They had also advanced out of sight of the 156th Brigade on their left, and although their exposed left flank on the Wadi Mukaddam, was partly covered by the advance of two machine gun sections, the left section of the 10th Battalion was hopelessly exposed. Subsequently, the 52nd Division advanced their right to ease the situation, but the advanced group was eventually forced to withdraw back across the road when two Ottoman battalions counterattacked strongly. They were forced back another 600 yards before supporting machine guns in the Wadi Mukaddam stopped the counterattack. Meanwhile, the right half of the 10th Battalion London Regiment had kept touch with the 4th Battalion Northamptonshire Regiment, which was held up 500 yards from Ottoman trenches. A small party from the Northamptonshire Regiment, including Lewis Gunners, attacked a parapet, shooting Ottoman soldiers' defenders at point-blank range, but this small party was eventually destroyed. The attack by the 163rd Brigade was led by a tank towards an Ottoman redoubt one mile northwest of Cage. Sion. They advanced with the 4th Battalion Norfolk Regiment on the left and the 5th Battalion Norfolk Regiment on the right. While fighting their way to within 500 yards of their objective, about two-thirds of the 4th Battalion Norfolk Regiment became casualties while the remainder were pinned down. Despite being reinforced by the 8th Battalion Hampshire Regiment, no more ground was gained during fighting, which saw the Hampshires also suffer very heavy losses. Meanwhile, at 9 o'clock the tank, followed by part of the 5th Battalion Norfolk Regiment on the right, entered a redoubt, capturing 20 prisoners and killing others of the hostile garrison. The fire from several hostile artillery batteries was concentrated on the redoubt, destroying the tank and killing most of the infantrymen. So many casualties were suffered by this battalion that they were unable to withstand a strong counter-attack, during which the survivors were captured. The few who managed to escape were forced back to the ridge from which they had launched their attack. These three battalions lost 1,500 men, including two commanding officers and all 12 company commanders. 
At 1300 hours the 161st Brigade was ordered to reinforce the line held by the 163rd Brigade. Subsequently, the 5th Battalion Suffolk Regiment, and the 6th Battalion Essex Regiment made a fresh attack on the redoubt which had briefly been captured by the 5th Battalion Norfolk Regiment. At 1420, before this advance had become seriously engaged, orders were received for the whole line to stand fast. Eastern force ordered the divisions to dig in on the line they occupied. During the battle three tanks were captured by the Ottoman defenders. On the right of the 163rd Brigade, the Imperial Camel Brigade, reinforced by one battalion of the 161st Brigade advanced from Dumbell Hill. The 1st Battalion Imperial Camel Brigade advanced to occupy tank redoubt on the left of the line, while the 3rd Battalion Imperial Camel Brigade crossed the Gaza to Beersheba Road and temporarily occupied both Jack and Jill positions to the east of Cage. Sion. They withdrew when the 4th Light Horse Brigade on their right was forced to withdraw during an Ottoman counter-attack. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 4 Mounted Attacks the Desert Column was deployed on the right of the Imperial Camel Brigade attached to Eastern Force, with the Imperial Mounted Division with the 17th Motor Machine Gun Battery was attached on the left, attacking towards the Atoyne Redoubt, while the Anzac Mounted Division with the 7th Light Car Patrol attached covered their right flank and attacked towards the Hera Redoubt. Anzac Mounted Division was also to remain prepared to exploit any gaps in the Ottoman line. The mounted force supported the main infantry attack until either the defenders withdrew or a gap was forced in the front line. A Toine, Imperial Mounted Division at 6.30, one hour before the infantry attack began, the Imperial Mounted Division advanced on a wide front towards the Atoyne and Hairpin Redoubts. On the left, the 4th Light Horse Brigade continued the line of the Imperial Camel Brigade to the Wadi El Baha, seven miles southeast of Gaza. Then the 3rd Light Horse Brigade and the 5th Mounted Brigade on the extreme right continued the line, all attacking Atoyne on a two-mile front, with the 6th Mounted Brigade in divisional reserve. After approaching mounted, they were to launch their attack dismounted, when one quarter of the troopers would be holding four horses each, in lead horses. The Imperial Mounted Division's attack was supported by the Inverness and Ayrshire batteries escorted by the 3rd Squadron of the Auckland Mounted Rifles Regiment. The enemy artillery fire was the heaviest we had experienced, with shrapnel and high explosive. It was reported that the Turks had more than 250 big guns in action. Our troop, by short sharp rushes, got to within striking distance but the heavy casualties made it impossible to go any further. With its left in touch with the Imperial Camel Brigade, the 4th Light Horse Brigade's dismounted advance captured a position overlooking the Gaza to Beersheba Road near Cage. Sion. To their right, the 3rd Light Horse Brigade was by 9.15 ordered to halt its advance, as its forward position was attracting fire. They were close to the Atoyne Redoubt, having captured 70 prisoners, but the brigade began to suffer enfilading fire from the narrow spur known as Sausage Ridge to the southeast of the Wadi El Baha. Sausage Ridge, 5th Mounted and New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigades. This strongly held position to the southeast of the Atoyne position was being attacked by the 5th Mounted Brigade on the right of the Imperial Mounted Division. Their embattled attack was reinforced at 9.30 by the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment, although the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigades was to be prepared for a mounted attack. As the New Zealanders advanced with four machine guns under cover of fire from the Ayrshire Battery, the right of the Mounted Brigade was being forced back by the machine gun fire of an Ottoman battalion on the ridge. The New Zealanders took the pressure off the 5th Mounted Brigade, supported at one point by effective fire from two and a half horse artillery batteries. The Somerset and Ayrshire batteries and all available machine guns concentrated fire on Sausage Ridge, while the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment captured the southern end of the ridge. However, Ottoman fire from Hairpin Redoubt at the northern end of Sausage Ridge near the Gaza to Beersheba Road stopped their advance. At this stage, the Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment was ordered to reinforce the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment, 
and the 5th Mounted Brigade. At around noon, the remainder of the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade advanced at the trot, with the Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment on the left. Although hostile aircraft bombed them and artillery fire also caused severe casualties, the machine guns were placed in positions between 1,000 to 1,600 yards from the hairpin readout to produce effective fire, with advancing Ottoman troops only 400 yards away. The strong counterattacks suffered by eastern attack extended eastwards and, at 1400 hours, a large Ottoman force supported by artillery was attacking along the whole front held by the Imperial Mounted Division. The 3rd and 4th Light Horse Brigades were pushed back some distance, suffering numerous casualties, while the 6th Mounted Brigade in reserve was sent to reinforce the line. One regiment filled a gap which had developed between the 3rd and 4th Light Horse Brigades, while two regiments reinforced the 5th Mounted Brigade, supported by fire from the 263rd Brigade RFA. Together they held the Ottoman counter-attack and no further ground was lost before nightfall put an end to the fighting. Hera, 1st Light Horse Brigade while the 22nd Mounted Brigade in reserve moved to Tel El Far on the Wadi Guzzi, four miles south of Hisia, to cover the right of the Imperial Mounted Division and guard engineers developing water wells in the area, the 1st Light Horse Brigade was ordered to make a dismounted attack towards Hera on the extreme right of the battle line. Before noon, the 1st Light Horse Brigade had advanced to occupy Bekit S. Sana. In the afternoon, while the Ottoman counterattacked the Eastern Force and the Imperial Mounted Division, on their left a hostile force marched out from Hera to counterattack the 1st Light Horse Brigade. The Light Horsemen were also attacked on their flank by a regiment of the Ottoman 3rd Cavalry Division from Tel Esharia. They advanced to the attack between the Wadis Esharia and Imlay. Fire from the 1st Light Horse Brigade's Hotchkiss and Vickers machine guns, with the support of the Leicester Battery, stopped the counterattack. Although the 2nd Light Horse Brigade was to be prepared for a mounted attack, the 5th and 7th Light Horse Regiments held a wide stretch of front line south of the Wadi Imlay. Here they were attacked by a squadron of Ottoman cavalry, supported by another cavalry regiment and a force of Bedouin. With their rifles on their backs the light horsemen were defenseless in mounted attack and they were forced back under cover of their machine gun detachments, before eventually halting the Ottoman advance. Near dark, a threatened counter-attack by infantry from Beersheba on the extreme right of the line failed to develop. The Anzac Mounted Division retired to water in the Wadi Guzzi at Hesia where they were shelled, causing some casualties. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Cessation of EF Attacks Darkness ended fighting with anticipation for a renewal of the battle the next day. Although the EF infantry brigades had succeeded in entering the Ottoman trenches at several points, they were too weakened by the fierce defense to retain their gains during strong counter-attacks. Towards the end of the afternoon, it had become apparent there was no prospect of success on any portion of the front, and offensive operations ended after the Ottoman counter-attack was forced back. Dobell received reports from his divisional commanders describing the state of the troops, the low supply of ammunition, and the estimated 6,000 casualties. He decided to postpone the attack for 24 hours and reported to Murray that he was in agreement with the divisional commanders that another assault would only result in more losses. Murray agreed. The 53rd Division held Samson Ridge, and the 52nd Division held the line at the foot of Outpost Hill where construction of new defenses at Hart Hill and Blazed Hill were begun. Although ordered not to abandon any ground, the position of the 54th Division, out in the open and swept by fire, could not be maintained. The division was forced to withdraw to a position near Sheikh Abbas where they made contact with the 74th Division. The Imperial Camel Brigade, whose right was close to Cage. Sion, covered this withdrawal, before withdrawing in turn at 1945 to Charing Cross, southwest of Sheikh Abbas. Desert Column was withdrawn to an outpost line extending from the right of the 54th Division near Dumbell Hill on the edge of the Sheikh Abbas Ridge, through Munkail south of the Wadi El Baha, to a point on the Wadi Guzzi about one mile north of Shalal at Hisia. An Ottoman counter-attack was anticipated on 20 April, 
when German aircraft bombed EF camps and Ottoman cavalry mastered Hera. This threat did not seriously develop after the Ottoman cavalry was bombed by three BS and two Martin sides. Although no general counterattack occurred, there were numerous local attacks. One of these attacks, which attempted to advance down the Wadi Sion, was stopped by the 54th Division's artillery. Chapter 4 Section 2 Casualties During the battle the Ottoman defenders suffered between 82 and 402 killed, between 1,337 and 1,364 wounded, and between 242 and 247 missing. About 200 Ottoman prisoners were captured. Between 17 and 20 April, Eve lost 6,444 casualties. The infantry suffered 5,328 casualties, 2,870 of these were from the 54th Division and 1,828 from the 163rd Brigade alone. The 52nd Division suffered 1,874 casualties, the 53rd Division 584, the Imperial Camel Brigade 345 casualties, the Imperial Mounted Division 547 casualties, and the Anzac Mounted Division 105 casualties. Only one brigade in each of the 52nd and the 54th Divisions was intact or had suffered only light casualties. The 74th Division had not been engaged. Official casualty figures include 509 killed, 4,359 wounded, and 1,534 missing, including 272 prisoners of war, while unofficially the figure was much higher at 17,000. A slightly lower figure of 14,000 has also been claimed. The 10th Light Horse Regiment lost 14 officers and almost half the regiment's other ranks killed or wounded. Three months later on 12 July, General Allenby reported units are, however, below strength, and 5,150 infantry and 400 yeomanry reinforcements are required now to complete the four divisions and mounted now in the line to full strength. The Gaza War Cemetery bears silent witness to the casualties which were much more severe than the British public was told. Chapter 4 Section 3 Consequences The defeat of the EF boosted the Ottoman Fourth Army's morale. Within weeks Kress von Kressenstein was reinforced by the 7th and the 54th Divisions, and by October 1917 the 8th Army commanded by Kress von Kressenstein had been established with headquarters at Hull Cap north of Hooge. The EF's strength, which could have supported an advance to Jerusalem, was now decimated. Murray and Dobell were relieved of their commands and sent back to England, Dot the line secured during the battle by the EF was consolidated and strengthened and trench warfare established from Sheikh Eileen on the Mediterranean coast, to Sheikh Abbas and on to Tel El Jemi. This line was to be held for six months, during the so-called stalemate in southern Palestine, when plans for a fresh effort in the autumn were developed to capture Gaza and Jerusalem.